Good evening, Safe to Serve Local, Safe to Serve International, for another session Bible study on prophetic insights. Here we look at current events and how they are fulfilling Bible prophecies. And these current events are also showing us that the National Sunday Law, the mark of the beast, the close of human probation is near. And the second coming of Jesus Christ, praise God, is even at the doors. But again, before we begin, let's open up with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we believe and know your presence is here with us. Be with us as we go through these significant current events as they are fulfilling Bible prophecies. Give us ears that we may hear the voice of the Holy Spirit saying, this is the way, walk you in it. Bless us now, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Ever since Justice Anthony Kennedy resigned, yes. there's been much anticipation and even trepidation on the parts of some regarding who his replacement would be. And many are saying that this uh, replacement for Justice Kennedy is so significant that it can really shape the policy of the United States for years to come. Well, as of July 9th, of course, we know that uh, President Donald Trump made his nomination of Brett Kavanaugh. Mm. Now, we want to emphasize Correct. that this is simply a nomination. Yes. We're not saying that he is going to be confirmed. Whether or not he's confirmed is yet to be determined. However, the fact that he was even nominated to the office of the Supreme Court is prophetic. Correct. It is significant. It's prophetic because of what has been revealed leading up to his nomination mm. and also what has been revealed since his nomination yes. to, the, to the Supreme Court as of uh, July 9th. And let us just mention here that when Donald Trump narrowed his selection of who he would choose mm. to, the, uh, Supreme, to be the next Supreme Court justice, he had narrowed it down to four. He had a final four. And of the four, three of those four were Roman Catholic. So we, we have to ask, is there an agenda? Because, of course, Justice Kennedy was a Roman Catholic. So do they want a majority of Catholic on the Supreme Court bench? And a few years ago, a few years ago, we read multiple articles stating for the first time that Protestants were not the majority on the U.S. Supreme Court bench for the first time. And what we're seeing is when we look at the justices, the majority of them are Roman Catholics. Now notice what this says here. Again, from America Magazine, which is a Jesuit-run magazine. Mr. Kavanaugh and his wife, Ashley. Second sentence, if Mr. Kavanaugh is confirmed, the religious makeup of the court will remain unchanged. Five will be Catholic, three Jewish, and one Protestant. Now, who are they calling the one Protestant? Uh, of course, the newest uh, to the bench would be Neil Gorsuch. Correct, correct. Who Trump also uh, nominated. And uh, when we looked at the biography, the background, as it were, of Neil Gorsuch, we saw that he was... Uh, uh, reared Roman Catholic, attended Roman Catholic schools throughout his life. Correct. And it was just recently he began to attend an Episcopalian church. Mm -hmm. And we have a Jesuit maxim on the screen, which says from Ignatius Loyola, again, it is attributed to him, which says, give me the child for the first what, Hillary? For the first seven years and I will give you the man. Now, secondly, yes, go ahead. Yes, I was just saying, so that means uh, the education that Mr. Gorsuch received as a uh, young person, his worldview, his mindset is shaped by that uh, Roman Catholic ideology, that Correct. Roman Catholic mindset, and even Jesuit mindset because he went to a Jesuit school as a young person as well. Now, I wanna read you something, and what we're going to do, again, friends, we were preparing today for prayer meeting. But as we began to speak and pray about what all these events mean, we decided prayerfully to do this quick prophetic insight, right? Right. Notice now. Now let's, we just spoke about Justice um, 
Neil, Neil Gorsuch. Now, let's look at the other justices, such as the Jewish ones. Mm -hmm. I have an article here. Again, this will be posted below this video. Those, two of those Jews, Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Stephen G. Breyer, are members of the New York City-based Council on Foreign Relations, the CFR. And the CFR overseen by the city's Archbishop, Timothy Cardinal Dolan, again, who I describe as the Red Pope. Mm -hmm. And it's not by accident, even though they may profess to be Jewish, and we have one who profess to be a Protestant, and the rest are Catholics, what do they all attend annually, or the majority of them attend annually? The Red Mass. And because they have this uh, annual uh, Red Mass before uh, the new term each year uh, of the Supreme Court. On the screen, yes. And, and every year, a number of them turn out for that, where prayers are offered on their behalf so that they may... Mm -hmm. um, you know, exercise their office appropriately, which, it, which is, I mean, that's really a combination of church and state right Correct. there. And let's go to the Bible, because what we're seeing here, these current events are showing us that chapter 13 of the Revelation, verse 11 through verse number 17, is almost completely fulfilled. In verse number 11, the Bible speaks about America, amen? Right. The lamb-like beast that this lamb-like beast will one day speak as a dragon. And the two horns on this lamb represent civil and religious freedoms, right? Amen? Yes. A separation of church and state. But verse 11 says that this nation will one day speak how? As a dragon. As a dragon. And how does a nation speak, Hillary? Talk to us. Through her legislative and judicial branches of government. Okay, and through her what? Through her laws, her legislative and, her? and judicial branches of government. I want to quickly reference a statement here from Great Controversy, page 442. It says this, Great Controversy, page 442, the chapter entitled God's Law Immutable. It says this, the speaking... Let me begin from the top. The lamb-like horns and dragon voice of the symbol point to a striking contradiction between the professions and the practice of the nation thus represented. The speaking of the nation is the action of its legislative and judicial authorities. By such action, it will give the lie to those liberal and peaceful principles which it has put forth as the foundation of its policy. And notice now, we are seeing that in Congress, the majority, almost the majority, are Roman Catholics. Right. And we come to the U.S. Supreme Court, the majority are what now? Are Roman Catholic. And a lot of them, as you just pointed out, they may not be Roman Catholic uh, outwardly or by name, Correct. but they have those affiliation. They have some connection to Jesuitism, to Roman Catholicism. So they're all of the same mindset when you really think about it. A second reference from the book Great Controversy, Liberty of Conscience Threatened, page 564, one, two, three, fifth paragraph, one, two, three, four, the fifth paragraph, page 564 tells us that it is the Roman Catholic hierarchy, popery, that detests, hates the U.S. Constitution. Wow. And you can see the history of this now. And here we have Brett Kavanaugh, who is now coming in, nominated as a justice for the U.S. Supreme Court. Tell us, is he just a regular Catholic or are there levels and tiers in the Catholic Church. Yes, he's one of the high-ranking uh, Roman Catholics, Jesuits. He's a teacher, as we're going to see uh, as we go through his history, his biography, we're going to see that he is very active, a mm -hmm. very vibrant member uh, in Jesuit society and also in Roman Catholicism at large. And as you can see on the back screen, I mean, he's shaking hands with Pope John Paul II. Not anybody gets to a position where they you know, get to do that. They consider that a great honor, of course, Correct. especially, you know, Roman Catholics who look to the Pope as God on earth. But 
Yes, he's a high-ranking uh, Roman Catholic. So he's a Catholic active. Jesuit. Correct. Now, again, look, listen to what we are going to share with you now. This is uh, Brett Kavanaugh, some of his history. It says this, of course, a native of Bethesda, Maryland, and a graduate from which school, Hillary? Jesuit Georgetown Preparatory School. Hmm. Also, it says that he tutored at Washington Jesuit Academy. Hmm. Now think about that. He has published in the Yale Law Journal, the Georgetown Law Journal, also published writings, all right, in Not uh, Notre Dame Law Review, as well as the Catholic University Law Review. So he's no upstart Catholic. Right. No, no, no. He is a rising conservative star in the Catholic hierarchy, He's even renowned. in Jesuitism. Right. And also some of the other schools that he um, has published in their journals. I mean, some of the schools that are not Ivy League schools that are not affiliated with Roman Catholicism. So it shows that he has influence not only in Ro the Roman Catholic sphere, but that his influence extends even to the mainstream far beyond that which is even more dangerous. I'll give you one more point. It says, he is a regular lector at Blessed Sacrament Catholic Church in Washington, D.C., where he is a parishioner. Number four, Hillary. At Georgetown Preparatory School in Maryland, Kavanaugh excelled in sports and in the classroom, hmm. but he also took seriously the message of his Jesuit education hmm. and talks openly about his Catholicism. Openly. Openly. Mm -hmm. Notice now. He's, he's not ashamed. No. <laughs> I am a part of the vibrant Catholic. As a matter of fact, this was a part of his speech. Correct. Now, it's interesting. And this is why we are saying this is bigger. What we are saying this evening, it, it supersedes the person, Brett Kavanaugh. Whether he's confirmed or not is to be seen. The point here is just the rhetoric that surrounded and surround his, uh, his nomination. What he has said openly and publicly at his nomination, he says this, I am a part of the, yes, I am a part of the vibrant Catholic community in the DC area, said Kavanaugh after mentioning his Jesuit high school. Now, you go back to 1776. Would the founding fathers of America, the president of that time, nominate a vocal, public, well-known, rising star Catholic Jesuit? Not at all. And you so a change has come. That's our point. A change has come. America is morphing from the lamb-like beast to now Into to speak image. as a dragon, right. the image of the beast. Go That's ahead. That's right. And as you referenced uh, Great Controversy 564, that Roman Catholics hate the U.S. Constitution. Correct. When you look at what the Supreme Court is all about, it's supposed to pr protect or defend the U.S. Constitution. But if you're stacking the, the bench, the Supreme Court Correct. bench, with Roman Catholics, who it's a part of their religion to despise and cast contempt upon the U.S. Constitution. They're there for a particular reason, not to protect and to defend the Constitution, mm. but to undermine Take it and to uh, repudiate it so that Roman Catholic principles now can be brought in to the United States. And it's very, it's very, it's an irony and it's profound that President Trump and his associates, his advisors were telling him, we need a conservative to be nominated, brought to the bench, right? Confirmed, brought to the bench. One who is going to uphold the U.S. Constitution. But based on Roman Catholicism, Correct. Jesuitism, they are against the U.S. Constitution. It's right there on your screen, right. my friends. And their All loyalty right. to Jesuitism supersedes their loyalty to any government. Correct. Even if they take an oath of office Correct. to uphold the U.S. Constitution, the oath that they took to their secret society, Jesuitism, far supersedes their oath to the American Constitution. Then it says, this is Catholic news agency. That's what I'm saying. It's like, it's a, it's a bait and switch. We want a conservative justice to uphold the Constitution, but you, bring, you have nominated a Jesuit. Correct. 
who despises the U.S. Constitution. It's a paradox. Whether the justices are liberal or conservative, the mere fact that they lean Catholic and most of them were educated in Jesuit institution, then their objective is to, is to interpret the law to bring about a union of church and state. And no, no, here's my point, here's my point. Don't expect that these justices are going to say, we want Roman Catholicism in our courts outright. What they may say, we want the church to be brought into the public square. We want church social teachings to be implemented in the public square, which would be church and state union, church and state confederacy, which would be the image of the beast. That's right. In a brief speech, after the announcement, Kavanaugh spoke about the importance of his Catholic upbringing and how it has affected his career. And what did he say next about his motto? The motto of my Jesuit high school was mm. men for others, said Kavanaugh, who graduated from Georgetown Preparatory School near Washington, D.C. I have tried to live that creed. What creed is it? What, what creed? Well, according to him, he says it is... Um, men for others. Mm. But of course, we know the Jesuits, what is the purpose of the Jesuits? It's to reestablish papal supremacy and correct. to undo Protestantism. Correct, correct. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the main reasons the founding fathers of America, the presidents, would not have nominated a vocal public Jesuit to the U.S. Supreme Court. It correct. would not have taken place because they knew that they were running from the old world where church and state had confederated to remove their liberties and to implement the social teachings of Roman Catholicism, which kept the people in bondage. On the screen, we have the Jesuit oath, all right? And then we have recently, more recently, that the Jesuits are spies. Mm -hmm. Spies, right there on the screen. And that's a fulfillment, again, of GC Great Controversy, page 235. And wherever they go, mm. they're followed. A revival, a revival of, of pope. popery. So some of those Supreme Court meetings are revival meetings to convert Correct. some of the other justices that may not be. But like we said, they all have that same mindset. Correct. But and then he said on yesterday, uh, Kavanaugh, during his uh, acceptance speech for the nomination, all right? We don't want to sound as if we are alarmists. Oh, it's going to, we don't know if he's going to be confirmed. It says this, he said this, I am a part of the vibrant Catholic community in the DC area. And then he said also that 40 years ago, I was an altar boy for who he calls Father John. So we know where we are. We know where we are. Now, there are going to be people who are going to say, why are we so agitated by the fact that a vocal so-called conservative who claims that he is going to hold fast to his creed, his Jesuit education, is now being nominated to the U.S. Supreme Court, as a matter Trump said, be, outside of war, that to nominate the US, a US Supreme Court justice is, sec, is, is, is at the second, what? What did he say? One of the most significant Important. responsibilities of a president. Exactly. Do you know why? Mm -hmm. Why? Because the justices are there to shape the policies of the nation. And when you put a Jesuit person there, even if he's, even if he's not confirmed, the mere fact he was nominated Correct. says a lot. GC 235, like we mentioned. their objective is to shape the policy of nations. Yes. That's right. And as we mentioned, if it wasn't him, it was a 75% chance that it would have been another Roman Catholic now, that was nominated. So what about in the uh, people who say, but the Constitution says that we should not consult a person's religious affiliation for any office or public trust in the U.S. and that him being a Catholic or a Jesuit should not matter in his nomination. 
in his confirmation. What would we say toward that? It matters very much, How especially so? if you know what the Jesuits stand Correct. for. Correct. If you know what their objective is, if you know their modes of operation, you would know why um, that they should not be in those public offices. But it's, it's, it's somewhat, uh, it's known that Kavanaugh is a Jesuit. He's outspoken about it. But the, what you really have to worry about are those who c uh, climb up to these various offices secretively because then, you know, individuals don't know what they're there to do so they can more readily infiltrate. But the fact that a Jesuit is being openly embraced, you know, by uh, Catholics, non-Catholics, everybody is, as, so long as he's conservative, that's very alarming. And as you mentioned, a change has come to the United States. The change has come in uh, those that claim to be Protestant or those who claim to stand for the U.S. Constitution. Earlier we said, in 1776, all right, when these words were placed in the U.S. Constitution, Congress shall make no law in respecting the establishment of any religion or to prohibit the free exercise thereof and that no religious test shall ever be required for any office of public trust or for public trust in the U.S. Now pause right there. Did our founding fathers write those words of America, write those words thinking that it was okay if a vocal public Jesuit would say, I'm a Jesuit, I will stand firm to my creed, would they have thought about bringing that person in as a nominee for the U.S. Supreme Court? Not at all. Let's go to the history. Look at this. John Adams. This is from the America Magazine, a Jesuit article. They said that John Adams wrote to Thomas Jefferson that there is a group of men who belong to hell. And John Adams says that group of men are the sons of Ignatius Loyola. Who is that? That's the founder Let's of the Jesuits. Let's read that, Hillary. John Adams. Mm -hmm. John Adams and the Jesuits. In May 1816, Adams wrote to Jefferson about the restoration of the Society of Jesus. I do not like the reappearance of the Jesuits. Hmm. Shall we not have regular swarms of them here in as many disguises as only a king of the gypsies can assume, dressed as printers, publishers, writers, and schoolmasters? Hmm. If ever there was a body of men who merited damnation on earth right. and in hell. It is this society of Loyola's. Nevertheless, we are compelled by our system of religious toleration to offer them an asylum. It's not surprising that Adams would despise us. Mm. The society... So this is the American magazine right. now. So Jesuits. Adams said that the Jesuits belong in hell. So would, would, would John Adams have nominated an outspoken Jesuit. No. 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 That means a change has come to, to America. America. So this prophetic insight, it's bigger than Brett Kavanaugh. It's the issues. All right. So here is the Jesuits at the America Magazine now. The Society of Jesus was founded on obedience. Read that, Adams. Adams was an outspoken free thinker who bridled at any suggestion that he hold his tongue to a foreign power. So now here is the Jesuit magazine saying that Jesuits was founded on obedience to a foreign power. What does that mean then? Obedience to Roman Catholicism in the old world. The but, same Roman Catholicism that oppressed the people in the old world. So what if they take their Bibles and take an oath? That oath is, is subservient to the oath they take to Thank Jesuitism. you so much. So is this issue bigger than Brett Kavanaugh? It is. All right. Okay. Now, that's what we're seeing here. Now, a few hours ago, the young evangelist from Taylor to the World went into the field. And, of course, Safety Serve International, they brought these questions, probing questions, to the individuals in the community and I want you just to see a preview of the full video that will be posted in a few hours from now. And listen to what the people have to say. 
um, should a person's um, religious affiliation or even background be mentioned while giving um, his acceptance speech um, since his job is merely mostly political and not necessarily religious? You know what, me personally, I'm a little bit soured on the liberal stance of the Catholic Church. I grew up Catholic, born and raised, and I'm incredibly soured on what they're doing as far as advancing a liberal globalist agenda. So I think in a way it's not going to hurt, it's not going to help. I mean, JFK was a Catholic president. I think it, it depends on if the guy can do a good job or not. I mean, Trump was, if you remember, saying he was really not religious. Now all of a sudden he's an evangelical hero. He said, well, do you, you know, do you believe in forgiveness, et cetera, et cetera? And Trump said no. So I don't think it plays in, you know, it's a factor. I think there's a lot of factors, and I think they'll go over it, and I trust the process, the judicial process. And that means having Democrats cross-examine them as well and see that, hey, you know, this is going to be a, a judge for all people, not just for a select few, which is what I wouldn't want happening. Interesting point that you made there, Mark. Now, there is a clause um, within the United States Constitution called the No Religious Test Clause. And basically that clause says that any senators or representatives or anyone being nominated um, to political office um, should be bound by, as it says right here, by oath or affirmation to support the Constitution. But no religious test shall be ever be ever be required as a qualification to any office or public trust right. under the United States. Basically, saying that they're not bound by um, their religious affiliation and right. basically should not be you know and get the, get the job if they're you know Catholic or if they're you know Protestant or whatnot. But they're bound by the Constitution it's of their that separation. I mean, when you don't have a separation of church and state like Iran, look at what's happening to a lot of the people there. I'm not saying that having God in society is a great thing, but even in Turkey, what's happening with Erdogan, you're having a difference between a secular state and an Islamic people. But when you combine the two, what you get is fanaticism like Iran. So what Turkey has prided itself on since Ataturk in the 1920s was a very separate and distinct church and state. And this is what they're grappling with as well. And I believe that, yes, church and state should be separate or else we'd be living in a theocracy of maybe the majority. It might be a Christian theocracy or whatever, but that's what, you know, everyone kind of wants that for themselves. They want a theocracy of people that believe the way they do. But we see what happens with that through history. Interesting. Again, very interesting. And you know, also, Mark, it's very interesting that he mentioned that he's not only a devout Catholic, but he also mentions that he went to a Jesuit high school. During his speech, he made that um, comment there. And he said on, on quote, he said, the motto of my Jesuit high school was meant for others. I have tried to live um, that creed. So, Mark, you know, do you know who or, you know, who the Jesuits are? I do. I went to Villanova uh, University, in fact, which is a Jesuit-run institution. So, I'm very familiar I have a lot of positive things to say about Jesuits, however, I also have a lot of negative things. I think they're too liberal. I think they're too far left-leaning. I think that the Catholic Church, sadly, has gone to a left-leaning place, and that's a shame. But I think the Jesuits, as far as providing educational institutions, i.e. Notre Dame, you can't argue with the success rate of Jesuit-educated people. I mean, I think you could make this you know, clear argument that if you were to go to a school, in whatever urban area compared to a Jesuit school, granted they have to pay money to get in, but you're going to have a higher degree of success coming from a Jesuit institution versus a public institution, et cetera, et cetera. So I have a somewhat favorable opinion of them, but I have a somewhat not favorable opinion. Just my own. Indeed. Okay. And you know, Abraham Lincoln, going back to history a little bit, one of our forefathers of this great nation, um, made a statement not only about the Jesuits, but also about the Roman Catholic priests. And he says here in a statement, you, again, you can go back and research and look exactly what um, he said in this. He says here, this is Abraham Lincoln speaking, but there is a thing which is very certain. It is that if the American people could learn what I know of the fierce hatred of the generality of the priest of Rome against our institutions, our schools, our most sacred rights, and our so dearly bought liberties, they would drive them away tomorrow from among us, or they would shoot them as traitors. So what are your thoughts on Abraham Lincoln making these comments um, against the Roman Catholic priests as well as the Jesuits? Um, somewhat hard to believe, somewhat potentially true. I think, again, you know, the Catholic Church has become this left-leaning kind of weird spot. It's not the Catholic Church I grew up with, but it's kind of like this. The Soviet Union of the 19, you know, 1964 is not Russia of today. Putin goes to Easter services at St. Basil's Cathedral in Moscow, so it's not the exact same. You know, just to continue on that point, you know, he says 
or he went to a Jesuit high school. So Jesuits, uh, when we look in history, and even today, because they're still in existence, they are a male order of Catholic priests in the, um, you know, Catholic Church, oh, okay. right? And, but here, you know, it goes on to state the Jesuit oath, okay? Can you read this oath for me, please? I furthermore promise and declare that I will, when opportunity present, make a wage resentless war, secretly or openly, ooh, this is scary, against all heretics, protestants, and liberals, as I am directed to do, to extirpate and exterminate them from the face of the whole earth, and that I will spare neither age, sex, or condition, and that I will hang, waste, boil, fly, oh dear God, strangle and bury alive, this is hard to read, alive these infamous heretics, rip up the stomachs and wombs of their women, and cross their infants, heads against the walls in order to uh, in, uh, annihilate, annihilate. Uh, annihilate forever their ex execrable. execrable race as I at any time may be directed to do so by an agent of the Pope or superior of the Brotherhood of the Holy Faith of the Society of Jesus. This is exactly the terrorism that I was just mentioning. It, it, and, it's, it's terrifying. And this is uh, the Jesuit oath. So is this alarming to you that Brett Kavanaugh is a Jesuit and accepts the Jesuit oath? Absolutely. And I will be totally against it. I mean, I will myself take the responsibility to read a little more and dig in the subject from what from, from I've seen in the news, in media so far, from what you just shared. I mean, the, there's not much more to look into. I mean, I, 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 I wouldn't support him, to be honest. But uh, I'll make a responsible decision when the time comes. But honestly and openly, no, I wouldn't support anybody like that. And Nestor, to continue on this point, um, the president or the former president who is now dead, Abraham Lincoln, uh, who is honored and respected by most people, uh, he had this to say about the Jesuits. He says, but there is a thing which is very certain. It is that if the American people could learn what I know of the fierce hatred of the generality of the priest of Rome against our institutions, our schools, our most sacred rights, and our so dearly bought liberties. They would drive them away tomorrow from among us, or they would shoot them as traitors. So based upon the Jesuit oath and also Abraham Lincoln's comments, um, why are we nominating an openly Jesuit to the Supreme Court when on paper Jesuits are against our constitution? Well, we go back to extremist thinkers, uh, people that are playing politics, and parties and they a lot of people hide behind their beliefs to also protect their their assets and there's a ton of that in, in Trump's world so like I said I don't want to single out the Catholic Church I know that they, they have a very sad past a, a big area of them are trying to come back and fix whatever happened in history and in the bad. There's a lot of good souls in there, a lot of good people that really, really have a strong faith, as in any religion. Like, I have really horrible experiences and beautiful experiences in vari various religions, but based in history, from what you just read, if this guy is going for these beliefs, he has no place there. He shouldn't be elected. Amen. Amen. Very eye-opening. Correct. I, I was really taken aback by the first interview that uh, Richard conducted, that the gentleman was saying that the Jesuits are more on the liberal side, but as... The, the Hegelian dialectic. Right. right. That that's the, that's the persona that they want to take on so that they can better accomplish their agenda. Correct. But as the quote was read from Abraham Lincoln, if the American people knew what I know about the Jesuits. So... Um, it's incumbent upon the American people and all people really to uh, go back into history and see what the Jesuits stand for and understand that according to Bible prophecy, Roman Catholicism cannot change. Jesuits do not change. And uh, again, these articles are going to be posted below this video. This is Samuel Morse, not only Abraham Lincoln now, Samuel Morse. It says this, it is not in accordance with all experience of popish policy that Jesuits should encroach by little and little and persevere until they have attained to plentitude of power. At present, they have but one aim, 
in this country, America, which absorbs all others, and that is to make themselves popular. If they succeed, are they succeeding? Oh, yes. If they succeed in this, we shall then learn when too late mm. to remedy the evil that popery abandons none of its divine rights. Samuel wow. Morse, on page 48 of his book, Foreign Conspiracy Against the Liberties of the United States. And Sister White does have a chapter oh, yes. in the book, Great Controversy, entitled Liberty of Conscience Threatened. Threatened. And in that chapter, she does say, on page 581, the Roman Church, ooh, the Roman Church, her doctrines are exerting their influence in where? Legislative halls. In churches, in the, in the hearts of men. All that she desires it's is vantage, vantage ground. ground. And this already has been given her. We shall soon see and feel what the purpose of the Roman element is only when it is too late. Samuel Morse. That's right. No, yes. I was just going to say, you know, it's, it's very um, interesting that the American people, as he mentioned, he, how um, Jesuits are so widely accepted now and Correct. how they are not deemed as a threat anymore. And they're so welcoming of this uh, nominee, Mr. Kavanaugh. And it's hypocritical because if the nominee, let's just say, for instance, the nominee would have been a Muslim, hmm. How would they accept that? Or they wouldn't accept that. Who they publicly mentioned how he was educated on the Sharia law and that he will uphold his creed. His creed, exactly. They would, they would recoil in horror. It would never go through. Um, they would be fearful. You know, he's trying to undermine our constitution and establish his religion here. But why is it when it comes to the Jesuits that they're so widely accepted? And uh, ignorance... Sister White says, the sins of the church and the ignorance of the world, my words, lie at the door of the church. If we had educated the people by teaching, by preaching, by our publications, even the book Great Controversy, the majority of our leaders and people, civilians, would understand the aim of the Jesuits, the aims of the papacy. That's right. Now, these are some very recent articles that came out today. July 10th, from the USA Today Press, it says this. Number one, we have seen anti-Catholic bigotry hurled at Supreme Court justices before from groups like the KKK. Wow. So they're calling anyone who um, Thank you, exposes Hillary. Thank the you. sins of Catholicism, mm -hmm. they're comparing them to the most radical and heinous hate group, the Ku Klux Klan. Next they said, oh yes, oh yes. Next they said, Kavanaugh, on the other hand, is a person for whom, quote, that sort of thing is important. His Catholicism matters. Wow. Now, who does that statement bring us back to? It reminds us of Paul Ryan's recent statement that yes. he made that yes. we need Roman Catholic laws in this country. Did we put it here, Hillary? Yes, right there, right there. All right, on the yes. screen. Okay, this is the Daily Beast. It says, and the Daily Beast tells us that President Trump, quote, is carrying out the agenda of a small, secretive network of extremely conservative Catholic activists. Hmm. In layman terms, what they're saying is, our president, is listening to the advice of an extreme, conservative, Catholic group. Now, what does that tell us about the presidency and the campaign? Well, he's being bought and sold by those who are um, whispering their agenda to, the, to him, and he is carrying that out. And of course, we know that he never disbanded his evangelical board or his Roman Catholic Correct. board. So all of these nominees, all of the people that were even considered, yes had to pass through his advisory boards. And so we can see, um, we can see right through this nomination. Daily Beast, Hillary, when President Trump, when President Trump nominates a justice to the Supreme Court on Monday night, he will be carrying out the agenda of what group? A small secretive network of extremely conservative And Catholics. then it says, the Christian right, now friends, hear this, the Christian right has written about a lot, but hardly 
anyone talks about the Catholic right. Hmm. Four Supreme Court justices, they are more successful than anybody, than the NRA, the Israel lobby, Big Pharma. No one else has had that kind of impact. Wow. And when they mentioned the, um, the religious right, the evangelical right versus the conservative Catholic right, we know what happened from October uh, 31st, 2016, leading to October 31st, 2017, that Roman Catholics and Protestants have united. They say the protest is over. So when you talk about these two groups, their agenda is one and the same, and that's to legislate uh, religious laws, what they call moral laws. Hillary, Catholic we have to laws. go. We have to go. Any closing words? Because, friend, again, we were preparing for prayer meeting. But this has been breaking news. And we said we have to bring this before God's people that they may understand. And may I quickly add, uh, Brett Kavanaugh might not be confirmed. It may have been they put him up and first out there. They may knock down his confirmation, the Senate, right? And then they put forth who they really want to get inside there. So the issue is bigger than Brett Kavanaugh. And I hope you comprehended all that we just discussed. Now, friend, we have to get out of here. But I must say this. We can see now the power of the papacy gaining control. But don't just watch the papacy. Watch the formation the of, the, Hillary, of the, image the image of the beast. I'll leave this, these words with you. Chapter 13 of the Revelation, verse number 10, after it mentions the papacy, then it says, here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So as we see this is happening in America, it says this, watch carefully, here is the patience and the faith of the saints. As we see these things, ask God for more of his faith because we shall need his faith in these last days. Ask him for patience, the fruit of the Spirit, that we may be prepared for what is coming and the second coming of Jesus Christ. Friends, we are out of here for now. By God's grace, we will resume with more information. If you have comments, if you have questions, leave those below this video. And the news articles, the, the script will also be posted. God bless until we meet again. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this presentation, for your Holy Spirit. Keep us faithful. Keep us faithful and help us to awaken as many people as possible before it is too late. Save us, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right, friends, until we meet again.